Hello, this is Dr. Mike. And this is my for my CIS 2642, and this is for my pen test class. And we're looking at topic four, which is information gathering part two. And what that means is uh, we sort of split this here in half. Uh, the first part we looked at more uh, uh, passive gathering. This is more for active reconnaissance. So, so again, we're still in chapter three. And from our currently at the time of this recording, this is the uh, CompTIA Pen Test Plus Study Guide. And so you can see we were, went through footprint enumeration, and, and then we'll move to active reconnaissance here. So I'm not going to go through the textbook completely with you here. Let's give you an idea where we're starting at. So again, uh, we're looking at the textbook itself, and we'll look at some of the main concepts of this. Before we get into some of the details of the slide deck here, um, Realize that we have this passive and active phases and then vulnerability scanning, which is actually a f next topic. Um, but I'll say this, you can find yourself going from active back to passive possibly uh, against your target. And that can be in passive, of course, using uh, the tools like the OS and IT, uh, of course, Google and so on. We got tools galore here and don't forget the framework here. So you might find yourself finding a, an item in active uh, scanning that might have you go back and look for more passive things. So don't negate the fact that you will be going back and forth uh, between these. So we have all these tools that we you know passively get information about our target, web-based tools, and we gather information. Um, active, of course, we really active comes down to is this. You are actively hitting the target uh, with tools and processes. That doesn't mean it's um, noisy, but uh, some of the tools we'll see, of course, in map. And I'll demo, I'll do a separate video with some tool demonstrations uh, showing how you can use these in your uh, more active reconnaissance. Um, but some of these tools themselves, you might get this feel of a, uh, some of them vulnerability scanning. And for example, Burp Suite, let me go over that. Um, as you use it in a passive mode, or it does actually have some active features, so, and also does some vulnerability scanning just out of the box. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with your, your, act, your active reconnaissance digging at vulnerability scans. Hence, it might see that there's a CVE for a certain port or service. The, the best you know that right away, uh, again, more information you can get back and use in your attack. But normally active refers to, again, uh, the, the fact of actually running tools and processes against your target. So now passive, I think I mentioned before, passive you could be using your own tools. So for example, if it's a website, I might use uh, my web browser and actually just look at the website. So because we need to look at um, regular traffic for a web browser hint a website it's not really considered uh, sort of malicious in any nature uh, just opening the Firefox and just looking at your target gathering the different pages itself is that now we move this to more of an active phase using some tools it could be some more uh, traffic being relayed back but again it's gonna be very passive and active in nature so so don't think it's a, it's a, it's a simple uh, delimitation between passive and active there's times when we sort of bridge this here too we have the same VIN diagram here. So, in any case, um, as we move more into an active for information gathering part two, again, uh, we're going to interact with the system. That's probably the key here is so if we have a uh, maybe you want to create a login, if you're doing a full red team uh, black box test, maybe I'm just going to create an account if it's free accounts. If my, um, or maybe if it's a blog site, I'll see about posting some blog, uh, how that works. Uh, posting a blog comment and so on. Uh, or it could be if I have test accounts. You might be using those again to actually start logging in using your test accounts. So um, again, there is uh, great stuff here to analyze uh, prior to your identification, identification of your target. Um, again, I'm going to come back to this a lot. This is a fantastic framework. You might find yourself going back and forth uh, between the two. So, so we sort of already got an idea about our target. Even with passive, you might get an idea about the number of hosts. Uh, we saw uh, several examples, Shodan and things like that, or just external tools to give you some idea about the, the IP address range. Um, but now we're looking more into services, and there is an Nmap uh, video I did on basic Nmap scanning, 
it sort of falls into this framework too, but uh, it may have been tagged on a previous topic because it really, again, we are moving between one and the other. I'm actually going back and forth a lot. So uh, services is definitely going to be your end map. Uh, network devices, there's some tools for that. Um, if you're getting down to the point where you can actually uh, scan different devices on the network, we're looking for security devices and things like that. Um, Wi-Fi, there's a Wi-Fi network. If we're doing a Wi-Fi or wireless um, engagement, there are definitely some uh, tools that you might need. Uh, phone systems, some not to leave out. Uh, VoIP, voice over IP. Sometimes um, those could be out of date and they could uh, have an ability to be used in social engineering. Uh, imagine being able to log into someone's VoIP system and leave them a voicemail saying you're someone else. Um, spoofing a voicemail, for example, or getting information from stored voicemails. So sometimes we leave stuff in voice that would be considered a little more secure. Uh, it can be unsecure, so... Again, common ports, uh, no surprise here. You're gonna, you're gonna be looking at ports, port numbers, and understanding the services tied to them. You might also be looking for those um, we saw before in the previous video. Some basic in-map scanning is the version numbers, banner grabbing, things like that. Uh, that is definitely juicy stuff right there. If I know your version running SSH, uh, it's open, first off. If I see SSH is open, and it's running two versions behind, uh, you know, it's external facing, uh, running two versions behind, there could be exploits for that. So, but also look for high level ports. These are the ports in the 8,000 level um, and above, 8K and above ports. Um, you might see stuff, uh, you might see a um, HTTP port and up an 8K things like that. Sometimes um, we have services, or the client might have services running uh, for administration and login. Blogs, for example, might have a port out there. And some reason that port should be shut down, it can be left open. So again, look at all ports. An operation is just OS identification. Nmap is probably your main tool for that. But there are other ways to do this too. And again, we'll save that for a demo. This is going to be more about just the content itself. So we'll do a demo on that. But yeah, I mean, understanding what operating system your target has is going to be great uh, to help you uh, form attacks, so example. And also, it's going to help you form and uh, have better active scanning. So if I'm going to start doing vulnerability scanning, and I, from my active reconnaissance, I know my operating system is Linux, I don't need to run vulnerability scans for Windows. So it's going to limit scan time, and it's going to help us uh, just limit noise. And also be less, uh, have less noise in the network, and less noise in the response back. So really, it's scan time. Time is going to be the crunch, and if I can limit uh, what to scan for and vulnerability scans later for my active, it's going to help me out a whole bunch. And map, what can I say? Um, I showed it before. This is probably one of the premier tools, um, and it has got a lot of good stuff to it. Uh, we'll probably be using it all through my demos. This earlier on, even later on, we'll probably end up using it. So, nothing to say about that. And map, bookmark it, download it, install it. It's a fantastic tool. Uh, there are some scan techniques, uh, quick scans. Those are great. Sync scans, connect scans. Through it's looking for the three-way handshakes. Uh, that's important. You might use those later uh, to determine if there's a firewall in place. UDP scanning. And also we can do some stuff with spoof scanning. Um, we can uh, sort of hide ourselves. If we can be, do like example, dash D decoy scanning, or we'll actually do a demo for that. Also we can just do like our port ranges, uh, disable pinging, for example. So we can um, shape and map um, to our engagement. If the engagement, uh, most of the time the engagement knows that you're gonna be testing from a certain IP, um, it's fine. Use most time, most of them I'll run and map wide open, right? Why limit myself? But if it's more red team engagement where you want to sort of not be, be seen, you might find yourself using a decoy scan or uh, you know, look for spoofing, uh, lower the aggressiveness, things like that. So, Also, NMAP output. So something I didn't draw on here is uh, as we do stuff from both passive and active, you can generate output. So our output, and it should go to our notes. So. And notes could be a copy paste from the nmap scan. Um, it could be PDF dumps from web pages. 
And this is great too because if I'm during passive, if I get information and I actually um, add more stuff with active, and I don't want to do, let's say I want to keep myself quiet, <laughs> I might be able to limit my active scanning based off what I found in passive. So my passive notes here might give me enough information why I can limit or quiet my in-map for my active notes, um, and so on. So again, we, we, our notes can help us build out this process here. And also, I don't want to run an active scan and uh, have to go do it again because I don't have, I forgot what ports were open. Now, it is possible that during, the turn, during your engagement, you might need to go back, even way later on, when you're trying to do a vulnerability, maybe kick off an exploit and it's not working, you might need to go all the way back and double check the scan. It's possible, and I've actually had this happen, uh, where I think, uh, for example, I had a target that was running a WordPress. So WP scan, a lot of good WordPress stuff. WordPress is a juicy target. Um, brand new WordPress exploit came out. I got the exploit. Uh, it literally came out during my engagement. I downloaded the exploit information the best I could. Uh, I tried to use it, and then I went back and had to do an active scan with WP scan and find that they actually patched their blog right away, which was good for the client. Bad for me, I couldn't use it, but that was a good showing. And that's actually kind of stuff you want to show later in your reporting. Um, show that maybe they have a patching process that is working correctly. Um, it's okay to show that because you say, I tried to defeat you with this and you patched it really quick and I couldn't. So bravo on that. Again, you want to sort of be there as a, um, you're sort of becoming the enemy, but you also want to, you know, um, show what good things your, your, your client does have. Um, so they know, they know their best practices are currently running versus their of course, practices that need improvement or processes that need improvement. But uh, back to output. Um, not all notes, you know, again, we can copy and paste stuff, but we want to actually take some of the stuff from our output and maybe put to other tools. So um, Metasploit, for example. Um, if I'm going to use Metasploit later, you can import um, XML output from Nmap into Metasploit. Or you can run Nmap in Metasploit also. Um, but it could be that maybe that initially you didn't think you wanted to need Metasploit, and later on you're like, oh yeah, I do want it. Well, if I have the XML output from uh, Nmap, as well as my output, just copy and paste it, I can actually dump that to Metasploit. So that's one example where uh, possibly, you know, run Nmap once, get the business to copy and paste the text, put in your notes, start making notes about, you know, uh, ports that look interesting, or services, and then maybe take that same output, run it again, and get the XML for it. Or look at doing dual dual output if possible. Uh, and there's probably options for this. Topology scans. Uh, this is called ZenMap. It's pretty handy. Uh, I've actually used ZenMap before, uh, especially where I'm running any more white box tests where the client knows I'm there. I can go back and run several scans. Sometimes visualization is great. Um, it could be something here that I want to show the client that came up. I don't know. Um, maybe this. And this printer is able to get exploited and lead me to further networks. Um, honestly, um, it's great for training. You can again, the visualizations can be great if you think it's going to be handy for your reporting. Um, if you're in a red team situation where you don't want to do too much scanning, there's no sense in going back to it again. But it just realize that there is topology. It could help you get an idea of the different devices out there. Now you have other tools you can use too. Our SNMP, our Network Management Protocol. Uh, we get information about the status, versions, what's running out there, uh, specifically if you see security devices in place. Um, it's possible that these security devices themselves might be hackable uh, and or might let us know uh, what's working and what, the, what will give us some caution. So, Another one, of course, is capturing packets. Now, if you're doing a web-based um, Engagement. This might not be very active. Uh, I'm not going to do a PCAP or a TCP dump, for example. That's actually what you really your core tool of TCP dump. I'm not going to do a TCP dump for all my internet access. Uh, so, where that could be handy though is this. Let's look at more of an engagement, maybe using a mobile app. So, I have a mobile device here. I'm going to set up a, a proxy. So, for example, what I do here is the system I'm on right now is my system I use for taking notes, listening to music, and so on as I work. And then maybe down here, you'll see off the camera here, I have a laptop that's hardwired in, and that's running just my tools I need it for. And most of the time, uh, Mac, I know Linux, you can create a Wi-Fi hotspot. 
So this is wired into the internet. I create a Wi-Fi hotspot and I only connect uh, for my Wi-Fi hotspot here. I'm going to do my best to smart work. My mobile device. And what I do is I use TCP dump or easy Wireshark. That's probably what our best thing is Wireshark. And I will capture as I open that mobile app up, I log in, things like that. I will capture the packets here. And then later on, I can um, transfer this, this uh, Wireshark PCAP file to an offline device um, using my workstation, some of the more screen real estate, or do it on this device here. But I'm going to do is now I'm hit stop, and I have just the network um, information from this device for this mobile device, for that mobile app. And I can verify that I'm doing things like the login, uh, the login itself is running through secure channels. There's no, no information being leaked out, things like that. So, um, of course, the Wi-Fi scan. If, you, if your target is a, is a uh, Wi-Fi network, and for a company or your client, uh, of course, just capturing Wi-Fi uh, traffic from their Wi-Fi network could be handy. Um, so maybe you want to see if there's anything being leaked out from normal traffic. That's something you can look at. Um, Wireshark again. So if, if NMNAP's one of the tools, Wireshark's fantastic, another great tool, uh, for both for use for analysis. But our, our core tool is TCP dump. So uh, that's our core tool that's used for crap, capturing those, those packets. Also, as we interact with our client, we might be able to capture packets with TCP dump and see the responses back. So for example, I know we're using HPing, um, which is one of the labs, you will use that. So these tools in conjunction and maybe testing is a firewall in place, um, and if so, can you circumvent the firewall? So, and that's can here there, HP and uh, uh, packet crafting. Definitely get a little more advanced here. What we're looking for is um, looking for specific reactions, and is it possible we can uh, leverage those in the further attacks? So, that's the tool that's going to be used in one of the things. Honestly, I haven't used that tool very much um, because more, most of my stuff is web based. And if I do run in, though, into a web app firewall, which I talked about before in the previous videos, possibly we'll use this to see if I can circumvent it. Um, but there's other ways to do that, too. And we'll get to that a little later. Numeration. Okay, that's a big one. Uh, along with your list of targets, uh, we should always have, of course, users and IDs, email addresses, relations, and so on. Again, this is more back to our OS and IT framework here. Uh, usernames, email addresses, so on. You might use tools here to help uh, look for specific sites. GitHub, Amazon, so on. Keybase, has I, have I been pwned, things like that. Um, APIs. So where do you find this information at? In a in a path, in more active reconnaissance, is we, so we looked at our information as we gather. There's tools that can do this for us. Find email addresses, find API keys, now one of them is called Burp Suite. I'll demo that separate here. We do a tools demo. What we're doing is looking for scripts and code. And uh, it can be as simple as if it's a mobile app, maybe I take a mobile app, and here's an example. It's a mobile app. Um, I did one with an uh, Android app, and there's a cache file, and it's binary. But I uh, run that through, uh, copy that off onto, onto my Linux system, and run that through, for example, strings and getting the ASCII text out. And you might be surprised what you might find inside that. Could it be an API key? Could there be a base64 login, uh, which you can reverse engineer, things like that. So uh, app caches, things like that. Um, and of course, if it's a web page, look at source, look at the user source. Look for comments, look for email addresses. It could be usernames, emails. Um, it could be email addresses and that could be usernames. For example, uh, sometimes we will comment our code when they make changes, a developer will, and put their name and maybe email address. Well, a lot of times, a lot of, uh, of our resources are used, email addresses are username. So we actually have a user ID that we can use. Possibly go back to OS INT and get information about that user. Is it possible they have a weak password? So you can see how this um, scraping information about our target can come in here. Uh, if it's compiled code, it's a possible decompile. This is a pretty big thing here. Um, reverse engineering compiled code, honestly, is I mean, not very much. It's something, if you do find compiled code, though, you can grab it and possibly use it. Um, 
but that's gonna be a really, really deep hole <laughs> to get into. So for now, we'll skip that. This one though, gathering copies of the scripts and code and looking for content. Again, we have tools to help us with this and we'll do that more in the tools demo. So, and that ends the slideshow here. Um, and that ends, of course, our active look at that. Our last thing I'll end up here with is, of course, we'll clear off this. Um, I just closed it. Okay. <laughs> so I keep closing too many tabs. Um, the pen test execution standard. Here we go. Intelligence gathering. That's what I wanted, which I actually kept open. All right. <laughs> so, um, again, back here, again, we're looking at this is OS and IT, org charts, things like that. Um, Offside gathering, here we go, footprint enumeration. So there's some good stuff inside this, this, this uh, pen test standard.org. Um, DNS, DNS discovery, looking for DNS servers. That's a big one. Uh, is it on, we're looking at VMs. We're looking at virtual hosts, also think of cloud. And this can be done also more, more during the passive reconnaissance, but if our client is on the cloud and they didn't tell us that, this really does, does, could change in a lot of ways. Or they have the cloud involved somehow, it could be Cloudflare. FireEye, or maybe using an Amazon or Azure, and this was not part of the initial contract uh, statement of work. Uh, that's going to change a lot of things. First off, a lot of web services uh, might stomp your activity without any kind of um, pen test application put in. So, and Amazon has a way to go and get an approval for pen testing for the client that's on Amazon. Um, also, maybe you need to deal with Cloudflare. There's always ways around it. Um, if not, it, can you somehow directly test the servers directly? And uh, so virtual host detection and cloud, I'm going to add that to that cloud there. But there's some good stuff here for printing passive reconnaissance from some ages and identifying mechanisms. There you go. So looking for traffic shifting devices, uh, looking for things like firewalls. That's probably the biggest one is firewalls or web app firewalls in place. So and now we'll take some active reconnaissance and um, that should show up there in that, that session. So again, that is the pen testing standard and that will give us an idea about um, about how we can further our active reconnaissance. Thank you for watching.